Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. You know, I get a lot of messages from you all in regards to what I study and how I study. I thought today I would discuss more than the articles that I download on my iPad and discuss the books that I use and read that have become my Bible. Thanks for joining, and here we go. All right, guys, so I listen to all these questions about how I study and what I study, I want to be able to answer for you. And so we're going to go through what I do on a daily basis. Now, for me, and what I do in my practice is I mix a little bit of old school with a little bit of new school. Now, to be honest with you, in terms of Googling and downloading articles that I get from the internet, I'm just good at that. I've developed a skill over time. That's not something that I can really teach. It's something that I can show if you're next to me in clinic, but it's really tough to teach. But I want you guys to know that every paper that I read, I have to have a certain foundation of knowledge to be able to pick up what I'm reading from my iPad. And the way that I have done that is over the course of time, I've bought certain books. My grandmother in medical school gave me her credit card and said, buy whatever medical school book you need, that's fine. And that's what I did. So I went through a lot of trial and error. I'm a pulmonary critical care and internal medicine physician. So that means I focus on the lung, I focus on the intensive care unit, and I focus on other organs like the heart, the brain, the kidney, the liver, the spleen, and things of that sort. My interest is in immunology. I love white blood cells and what they do. The first book that I probably read from front to back, and I'm talking every page, is Felsen's Principles of Chest Radiology. And you can see that here. Why do I love this book? Well, this book essentially taught me how to read chest x-rays. So you can see on the cover, you can see CT scans and you can see some interstitial lung disease, some fibrosis here. You can see a PET CT here, all right? This is a nodule that's taken up a lot of glucose, which is why it's lighting up. And then you can see how big this nodule is on the CT scan. And this book is a, the cover at least is a little bit of a misconception because what you learn how to do in this book is read chest x-rays, right? And you can see chest x-rays here. Now the way that this book is constructed and the way that it's written is as you read and learn, what it has is it has blank spaces on one side of the page and the answers on the other side to help your brain learn what it is you've just read. It's an excellent strategy to be able to allow people to learn something so efficiently and so quickly, whether you're a med student, a resident, a fellow, a respiratory therapist, a nurse, if you read this book from front to back, you're gonna learn how to read a chest x-ray. Again, I'm a pulmonologist. I read CT scans on my own. How do I learn how to do that? Well, this is how. This book is written by Webb, right? Richard Webb and colleagues. It's called High Resolution CT of the Lung. This book teaches you how to read high resolution CAT scans. What I mean by that is when we say high resolution, what we mean is that CAT scan is thinly sliced. And when you're scrolling through, you get really thin pieces of lung. And more than that, it teaches you what you're looking at when you can see the lung, what diseases. This is a chapter on idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. I've taught you this before. Remember, there are eight idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. What are they? right? Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, acute interstitial pneumonia, nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, pulmonary parenchymal fibroelastosis, all right? You have lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia. You have respiratory bronchiolitis interstitial lung disease. You have disquimative interstitial pneumonia. You also have cryptogenic organizing pneumonia as a part of that group. So what it does in this chapter is it goes through what objective findings you're gonna find on CAT scan to be able to differentiate IPF, DIP, and LIP from one another. This book also teaches you connective tissue disease, interstitial lung disease. In other words, this is the disease that affects people that have rheumatoid arthritis, systemic sclerosis, Sjogren's syndrome, 
all types of autoimmune connective tissue diseases because again, once you develop these autoantibodies, they not only attack your skin, as in systemic sclerosis, or your joints, as in rheumatoid arthritis, they also attack your lung. And so you wanna be able to teach yourself how to read high resolution chest CTs so that you can better evaluate your patient and you can better treat your patient and recognize when they may have a systemic autoimmune disease that is very likely to be affecting their life. Now, I just talked about autoimmune diseases, right? So obviously we're gonna have to talk about pulmonary manifestations of autoimmune disease. Now, this book is written by the European Respiratory Society. First of all, European Respiratory Society, ERS, is one of my favorite academic journals. I love it. I've been to it. I went to Madrid last year and actually spoke at ERS, and it was amazing. I spoke on the immunology of asthma. But when you look at this book, which is titled Pulmonary Manifestations of Systemic Diseases, what it does is it goes through each systemic disease, like systemic sclerosis, and it tells you about the prevalence of the disease, it tells you about the pulmonary findings in the disease, and it also tells you and gives you data on how to treat those specific diseases. So for an interstitial lung disease doc like me, this book is of the utmost importance. It's organized very well. The chapters are essentially named after the connective tissue diseases, right? So you have your systemic sclerosis chapter, you have your inflammatory myopathy chapter, you have your rheumatoid arthritis chapter. This book is extremely important, all right? Within this book also, there might even be what's called histology, which is what things look like under the microscope. So when I look under the microscope, I can get a sense of what types of white blood cells are there, which also keys you in on what type of therapies are important. So this book, again, has become a part of my pulmonary Bible, so to speak. Now, you might be asking yourselves with the books that are left, they're all kind of written by the same publishing company, right? The Lippincott's Illustrated Reviews. These books were my Bible in medical school. I'm a visual learner, right? So when I look at an image, I can get more from looking at that image than I can from reading multiple paragraphs. It's just how I'm wired and how I'm trained. And so when I look at the Lippincott's Illustrated Review of Pharmacology, again, there's lots of images in this book and it goes through each medicine and it shows me their mechanism and how these medicines work. It shows me when you give these medicines to patients, how the medicine is metabolized or broken down in the organ. It shows me and teaches me the receptors that these medicines actually act on. The most important thing when it comes to pharmacology is understanding the receptor that the medicine actually interacts with. Because not only does it teach you how the medicine works, but it also shows you why the side effects of the medicine are obvious. Because if you activate that receptor, maybe you activate it in the brain or you activate it in the blood vessel, you're also activating it wherever else that receptor is located. So the side effects become obvious. So once you learn that, pharmacology becomes easy. So this Lippincott's Pharmacologic Review is absolutely breathtaking, it's excellent. By that same token, we also have my Lippincott's Biochemistry Review. And people might ask me, why do you still pay attention to biochemistry as a pulmonary critical care doctor? Well, because biochemistry is basically pharmacology. When you're looking at acid base disturbances in the intensive care unit, those are essentially bio biochemical reactions. And so I'm always going through glycolysis and the TCA cycle, right? These are all cycles that we learned about in medical school when you're breaking down glucose, right? And then you're breaking down the acetyl-CoA and pushing those hydrogen protons into the H plus channel to create that energy to make that ATP, right? These processes are important because it allows you to understand why your pH is low or why your pH is high or why your bicarb is low, your bicarb is high. It allows you to really put things together chemically. At least for me, I need to understand how the house got built, right? And if you are gonna start with the foundation and the bricks, well, you gotta get back to that level. And how do you get back to that level? Well, you have to go back and you gotta read your biochemistry book. So for me, this Lippincott's Illustrated Review of Biochemistry is absolutely paramount.
Immunology, I love. You guys all know that I love the study of the white blood cells. Lippincott's illustrated review on immunology is absolutely fantastic. You can see the different types of white blood cells here. These are B cells with antibodies on them. You can see and understand the different types of clinical immunology that's applied here. When you get towards the end of the book, we're really, really going over what's important clinically. There's a chapter on transplantation, right? In other words, how do the medicines work that we use once an organ transplant has happened in a certain individual? What are the mechanisms of this medicine and how is it going to affect the immune system moving forward? I will also say that the New England Journal of Medicine around 1999, year 2000, they published about a five or six paper series on immunology talking about the innate and the adaptive immune system. They talked about many different aspects of immunology and I think it's really, really good to start with that as a beginner to understand how the white blood cell functions. It's extremely important. I will also say that I just purchased a book on my iPad in regards to immunology. Clinical Immunology Principles and Practice. It's written by Robert Rich. Um, it's got some of the same images that our Lippincott's review has, but it's written to be a little bit more clinical. Like, how are you going to apply this? We know how important this topic is right now because what are we talking about? We're talking about SARS-CoV-2 and we're talking about the immunology of SARS-CoV-2 and how the white blood cells fight this virus, how vaccines actually work, which is immunology, and why they're actually necessary. Speaking of SARS-CoV-2, another great review is Microbiology, Lippincott's Illustrated Review. Why is this important? Because when I'm in the intensive care unit and I'm thinking about infections and what type of infection is causing my patient to have sepsis or septic shock, I wanna know how to treat that organism. And the way to treat the organism is to understand what the organism actually looks like. What does the bacterial cell wall look like? What does the Neisseria bacterial cell wall have in it? How can I inhibit its function? How can I puncture a hole in that wall, which essentially kills the cells? And so what you have in this book is you have several chapters that are on several different pathogens, and it, it allows you to uncover that pathogen, get inside of it, and really, really understand why it does what it does, why it binds to this. Why does gram-negative rod sepsis lead to significant hypotension? Well, it has lipopolysaccharide in its cell wall, right? So if it has lipopolysaccharide, that causes an extreme amount of inflammation in your bloodstream, which allows for the loss of blood in your vessel and fluid in your vessel when it leaks and you third space and your blood pressure goes low. So it's important for us to understand these things because clinically it begins to make sense. So for me, these books are my Bible. These books allow me to be whatever it is I am. And this is how I study. So I can tell you that when I'm studying, when I'm reading a paper that I've just downloaded, sometimes I gotta go back to these books and understand certain things. You guys just heard about a drug called XOCD24, which was a drug that was used on these Israeli patients in COVID-19. Understanding all of that takes a lot of effort in terms of reading my Bible to put everything together. So as I said, what I want you guys to understand is how I do what I do. This is how I do it. I am by no way saying this is what you need to do, but you do have to spend a significant amount of time understanding what your Bible is and what you need to do to be successful for whatever it is you want to be. If you or your friends are interested in these books, I'm gonna put the link below and you can go ahead and check them out and purchase them if you wish. So thanks for joining me today. I encourage everybody to find your own Bible. Understand what books you need to read that are gonna allow you to be a better you. I understand how hard it is. I understand the effort that it takes, but there's no doubt in my mind that you can do it because if I could do it, everybody can do it. I really appreciate you guys being here today. It's good to be back here on Medicine Deconstructed. Please come back next week where I promise to give you more ammunition besides this foundation. Thanks again.